Have you ever seen a situation where something looks like a major setback, but once you dig deeper, it turns out to be far more complicated and maybe not even a setback at all? That's exactly what happened when a final rejection arrived for one of Aptera's solar patents. At first glance, it sounded like a disaster. But once you understand how patent law works, what Aptera actually filed, and how much thought has gone into their solar technology, the story becomes much more interesting and far less alarming. On July 21, 2025, one of Aptera's U.S. patent applications, specifically related to curved laminated solar panels and the method used to manufacture them, received what's called a final rejection from the United States Patent and Trademark Office. That phrase alone is enough to make anyone's stomach drop. Final rejection sounds like a door slamming shut. But in the world of patents, the term is misleading. A final rejection often just means the examiner isn't satisfied with the previous set of arguments. It doesn't mean the patent is dead. Applicants can still respond, still appeal, still modify, and still push forward. And Aptera has more than one angle to work with. Aptera didn't submit just one patent. They submitted multiple applications, and they submitted them across several jurisdictions. They have filings in the United States, the European Union, Great Britain, China, and Mexico. There is no such thing as a universal global patent. Each country or region has its own system, its own process, and its own decision-making standards. That means a patent can be approved in one country and rejected in another, and both outcomes can exist simultaneously. So this U.S. rejection isn't the whole story. In fact, Aptera filed two almost identical U.S. patents for the same underlying technology, but with a crucial difference in timing and refinement. The first application received the final rejection, the second one, filed about a year and a half later, appears to be a refined, strengthened version with adjustments to help it survive scrutiny. The newer patent has only received a non-final rejection so far, which is completely normal in early stages. Most patents go through several rounds of back and forth with examiners before approval. After a final rejection, the applicant still has options. They can request a review by a higher level examiner, they can submit new arguments, they can amend claims, they can ask for a re-examination, and they have three months, sometimes extendable, to respond. So even though the phrase sounds ominous, it's simply part of the negotiation process between inventors and the patent office. But here's the key insight. Abtera probably isn't going to fight hard for the older application. Their newer, stronger filing appears strategically designed to replace the initial attempt. Once you read the patent itself, a fascinating picture emerges. You see exactly what problems Aptera is trying to solve, how deeply they've studied environmental stress, and how many failure modes they've accounted for. The patent explains the challenge clearly. Traditional solar panels simply aren't built for vehicles. In typical terrestrial installations, weight isn't critical, bending isn't required, and impact risks are predictable. But once you mount solar panels onto a vehicle with complex curves and harsh operating conditions, everything changes. Flat, tempered glass panels are durable but heavy. Polymers are lighter but can yellow, crack, or delaminate. Both options struggle with two-axis curvature, moisture ingress, and repeated impact stresses. The patent details challenge after challenge. Solar cells cracking from bending stress, water sneaking into layers, UV yellowing, polymer degradation, impact damage, road debris scratching the top layer, hail impact testing at 23 meters per second, thermal cycling causing delamination, and even microscopic chemical reactions between IBC cells and metal layers when bent too far. Each of these issues can destroy a panel or shorten its lifespan significantly. And yet, the patent shows Aptera addressing each one with specific engineering strategies. 
the patent goes further than problems. It outlines Aptera's attempts to solve them. For the glass version of their solar laminate, Aptera describes a sandwich structure with solar cells in the center, a pressure-sensitive adhesive that avoids heat-induced cell stress, and two curved layers of glass molded without damaging the cells. For the polymer version, things get even more complex. The panel becomes a nine-layer laminate with EPTE layers, polycarbonate stabilization cores, multiple adhesive layers, and a structure designed to prevent water intrusion, resist impacts, and maintain optical clarity. They even detail a method of creating a shaped flange or bending edges to protect the perimeter, preventing moisture infiltration, the single most harmful enemy of solar laminates. Reading the patent, it becomes clear Aptera engineers didn't overlook anything. They considered everything from microcracks to hailstorms to multidimensional curvature to the longevity of reflective coatings. Every common failure mode found in vehicle-mounted solar panels has been studied and designed around. That's not something you stumble into. That's experience and foresight. So why was the patent rejected? It wasn't rejected because the idea is bad. It wasn't rejected because the materials don't work. And it wasn't rejected because Aptera's engineering is flawed. The rejection happened because the examiner believed the patent's claims were not sufficiently novel. In simpler terms, the examiner thought that bending panels in two dimensions was just an obvious extension of existing one-dimensional bending methods. Aptera disagreed arguing that two-axis bending introduces unique technical challenges. But for this specific application, the examiner wasn't convinced. That's the entire basis of the rejection. Not the technology, not the functionality, not the feasibility, just the novelty threshold. Given all the evidence, the most likely scenario is this. Aptera will let the older patent, the one with the final rejection, quietly fade and they'll put their energy into the newer, stronger application. It contains refinements and clarifications that the first version lacked. It's currently only at a non-final rejection stage, which is common and expected. Most patents, especially highly technical ones, go through several iterations before approval. This is normal not a red flag. When you zoom out, there's a broader message here. Reading through the patents reveals just how extensively Aptera engineers have analyzed the challenges of solar integration on vehicles. Every environmental threat, every mechanical stress point, every manufacturing complication, you can find it addressed in these filings. This rejection doesn't show weakness, it shows ambition. It shows how far they're pushing solar integration, how deeply they're thinking about durability, and how much groundwork they've laid to ensure vehicle-mounted solar is truly long-lasting. The rejection is just one step in a long process. The real story is that Aptera has multiple filings, multiple strategies, and a detailed engineering roadmap for solar panels designed for real-world vehicle environments. And if the past is any indication, whenever you've wondered whether Aptera has thought about a problem, the answer is almost always yes. So while the headline might read like a setback, the reality is far more nuanced. Aptera's work is still very much in motion. Their patent strategy spans multiple jurisdictions, multiple filings, and multiple chances to secure protection. Their engineering approach is robust and deeply researched. And the patent that received the rejection likely isn't the one they intend to carry into the future anyway. The story isn't over, not even close. And as these filings move through the system, the evolution of Aptera solar technology will be something worth watching closely. Until then, there's one clear takeaway. A rejection letter doesn't define the innovation. The engineering does.